Hello everyone, welcome to this, the second video in this series, in which we will share with you our experience with the most common SFP modules and the switches that can be best used with this technology oriented for small to medium-sized business networks, in which they actually could perform at its best. We'll give you some little tips for quick implementation of what will soon become the standard of enterprise local area networks, the second of a series of videos oriented just for high-speed networks, Mm, and we can appreciate all the comments that you have regarding this matter. Basically, three objectives in this video. How to use the SFP modules in unified switches. Uh, know what the advantages of implementing the switches with SFP modules are. And understanding the use of unified aggregation switches as we'll see later in this video. These are switches that are very robust and allow to concentrate huge amounts of traffic and our next video will be dedicated to how to sketch up these high-speed networks. I'm pretty sure that at some point we all have wanted to have this transfer speed through our network, right? Well, the great advantage is that it is now available. Actually, this is kind of slow comparing to what you'll really achieve using 10 gigabit. Thanks to the massification of new technologies that, although, as we'll see in a few moments, date back to 2005, they are now readily available not only technically, because they have been around for a while, but also at a very affordable price for the small to medium-sized businesses, as we stated. Mm, that is reasonable cost um, for the benefit of us, the users, uh, or those who solve connectivity problems to small to medium-sized and big enterprises. Although it is true that 10 gigabit per second has been shown to many as a home standard, I don't know why, um, I don't think so, as not everybody is readily available to spend about $1,000 just for some gear for a small local area network. In the future, however, 10 gigabit per second will be pretty normal in businesses, uh, local area networks, as well as internet connections, going up to 120 gigabit per second lands. In my very personal opinion, of course, this is a matter of debate. We are beginning the era of the 10 gigabit per second network. Just as today we perceive the gigabit per second as a standard, that is going to be the 10 gigabit per second in the near future. We will talk about cost benefit constantly uh, in this and in future videos. Speaking of SFP modules, for those who start implementing these little devices, they stand for small form factor pluggable. Uh, these are transceivers, as some manufacturers call them, and they were also at a given point referred to as mini gigabit, gigabit interface connector. They are more common today, taking into account that we saw them in a bunch of network equipment remaining covered and never being used either due to the lack of need or low availability of accessories. Remember that everything is materialized by budgets and that's something always has to be considered for most companies. These SFP modules are being standardized and we are now allowing our networks to be more flexible at a cost that is already within the reach of small to medium sized companies. Mm. Companies that had had to stay away from fiber optics consider the cost. Mm. One of the advantages as we are seeing is the possibility of hot plugging these modules, which makes them very convenient to use. The possibility of installing fiber optic terminals in an increasingly simple way is one of the reasons why fiber SFP plus modules play such an important role and are becoming actually omnipresent. Personally, I invite you to start this migration or explore this technology as always cautious and as we always say, consult different sources. I'm just one of them. Mm, there are many wonderful videos from, you, uh, from our YouTube friends on how to call terminate fiber optics or even splice it and extend it with very low cost accessories. Something mm, that boosts this technology for being widely implemented. So, which ones are the ones we'll use most frequently? SFP at 1 gigabit per second, and it will remain for many years. SFP plus at 10 gigabit per second. Uh, SFP 28 at 25 gigabit per second. Th remember, this, there are a lot of uh, switches already available with main trunks in the SFP 28 standard. Quad SFP 28 at 100 and Quad SFP 56. That will be around uh, in a few years to come at 200 gigabit per second. For now, Quad SFP 28 and 56 will live for the big companies in need of huge data transfer rates that also have deep pockets to invest in such technologies. 
There is one important factor to consider and it is which SFP module you'll need to implement not only due to the type of fiber it uses but also the distance of the link you're going to set up. You may have to analyze the cost benefit in terms of which fiber to use, either multi-mode or single mode. Mostly you may need OM3 or OM4 colored aqua for 10 gigabit links in multi-mode for short distances or OS2 in typical yellow fiber for up to 10 kilometer links. SFP and SFP Plus are the ones we're going to focus on, basically because of the availability in most equipment today, uh, in case of SFP, and the SFP Plus modules, we must take into account the following considerations. For example, we should not confuse the ports SFP with SFP Plus, as they must be inserted in the correct slot, usually marked and identified in the switch. Let's pause here, again, why SFP modules? First, there are many advantages. The possibility of choosing the transmission medium that best suits uh, our infrastructure. Second, being able to customize our network by port and not by switch. Mm, customize the type of connection, for example single mode fiber, multi-mode fiber or copper cabling. Uh, manage the links that are miles away. We used to have or we used to leave this to a slow ISP links so that is the huge advantage. Do we adopt them or use this technology? Mm, we know that medium-sized companies, uh, people who work in multimedia, ultra-high-definition videos, advertising companies and media companies, um, among many others, will appreciate it immensely. Being able to quickly store large amounts of information on their servers or NAS, it's a big advantage. That is a central topic of our next video. Okay, so how do we use them in our unified switches and these great aggregation switches that we talked about? Before that, two recommended brands. Tenji Tech that we have used for many years and are very reliable as we have seen in these devices and of course Ubiquiti that guarantees the compatibility of its own components but I tell you that I have done very well using this Tenji Tech models. In the description we will leave you um, the link to our store in Amazon. It is very important to always verify compatibility with our equipment, be it Arista, uh, Ubiquiti, Juniper, Cisco, Aruba, whatever. In our case, we will emphasize in the Ubiquiti switches and routers, considering also that it works in the same way in the other brands. This is about interconnecting our equipment, and as always, considering uh, the exact hardware on both sides of aggregation links, especially. So, which devices use the SFP modules? Previously, it was an accessory that was seen in switches with more than 16 ports, or even bigger switches. Today, we see them in small switches, for example, these versatile uh, Unify Power over Ethernet switches, 150 watt. This one is the US 8, which includes two versatile 1 gigabit per second SFP ports. Enough for very remote locations, for example, and remote dependencies with fewer computers. Unify aggregation switches like this one, the US16XG, allows the use of channel aggregation technology, which we will explain later on with more detail. This aggregation switch with 12 SFP ports and 4 10 gigabit ports over copper may be very well the heart of very robust networks. All Unify 48 port models, for example, have two SFP plus port modules and the list continues to grow. Of course, in other brands, we see exactly the same thing. Uh, and the list of NAS uh, or network attached to storage devices that have gone 2.5 or 10 gigabit per second continue to grow. Uh, this is a very positive matter. Let me show you how easy it is to set up an SFP link. Remember that in the description we'll leave you a link to our store in Amazon where you will find everything you need to implement a 10 gigabit per second network with Unify switches. Um, here we have a Unify Dream Machine Pro, today the, probably the most powerful Unify gateway, um, dual one port for 10 gigabit per second internet or copper based connection. Uh, it also has a 10 uh, gigabit per second downlink and as we can see we can connect to our network backbone uh, or our vertical fiber interconnection that we can centralize the robust data concentration using the XG Unify switch, the US16XG. Always remember that one of the advantages of this type of switch is the aggregation that in addition to just adding up bandwidth provides protection against failures of our network due to cuts in the transmission cable. Aggregation let us have uh, links of 10, 20, 30 or 40 gigabit per second uh, interconnections. More and more into the US16XG, the option B, the RJ45s in copper are great to have. For example, they are extremely versatile for connections of 10 gigabit per second to NAS um, with RJ45s, 
more and more common these days, even more so with the availability of solid state drives and the RAID 0 disk arrays to optimize the speed, which in 10 gigabit links, we will be getting the most out of them. Interconnection of computer rooms in a building where we do not exceed 100 meters, another great use of these RJ45s. Servers that in the same server room have 10 gigabit or 2.5 gigabit network cards, great. Let us remember that in any case we can use these versatile SFP ports or SFP plus ports to switch to a 10 gigabit copper connection, limited to 30 meters of course, but it is a 10 gigabit link uh, over CAT6 or CAT7 copper cable. We may very well exceed this standard limit for a few meters, of course, depending on the quality of the accessories and cabling. Setting it up, it is not necessary at all. In the particular case of the current firmware of the UDM Pro and maybe in the case of the US16XG, in case that we want the link uh, of the fiber at 1 gigabit per second, it is necessary to choose the type of link negotiation to manual. It is the only thing to date. Uh, it may very soon change uh, by the time you watch this video, since some updates may be released for the firmware. Um, the value of aggregation switches. Reliability as each, links, uh, each link acts as a backup should the other ones fail or get disconnected. Uh, a scale above 10 gigabit per second when aggregating and allowing things like the one we saw in our link aggregation video. Minimizing download times for audiovisual materials is the most common use of these devices with the gigantic files of the cameras that increasingly have higher resolutions. So thank you very much everyone for watching this unusually long video. Thanks as always for your support and remember, share what you know as well. Subscribe to our channel and visit our store at Amazon and support us in this process. See you next time.